Hi everyone! In this video, we will be discussing bipolar disorder. Disclaimer: This video contains a sensitive topic. It is intended for educational purposes only and should not be used as a diagnosis. Please consult a certified healthcare professional if you have or think you may have this disorder. Today we'll be going over what bipolar disorder is, the symptoms associated with the disorder, the three types, causes, diagnostic techniques, and treatments. So, what is bipolar disorder? Bipolar disorder is a mental disorder that causes unusual shifts in mood, energy, activity levels, concentration, and the ability to carry out day-to-day -day tasks. In Canada, approximately 1% of the population over 15 years of age currently have bipolar disorder. Individuals with bipolar disorder have mood episodes, which are extreme and intense emotional states that occur at distinct times. These mood episodes are categorized as either manic, which is categorized as feeling extremely up, hypomanic, which is similar to mania except is less severe, or depressive, which is categorized as feeling extremely down. You can think of the three mood episodes as being on a spectrum, with mania and depression being on opposite ends and normal mood in the middle. There are several conditions that can sometimes be confused for bipolar disorder, such as borderline personality disorder and schizoaffective disorder. Borderline personality disorder, although having similar symptoms as bipolar disorder, is a personality disorder, whereas bipolar disorder is a mood disorder. Schizoaffective disorder also has similar symptoms as bipolar disorder, however it also has schizophrenia symptoms such as hallucinations or delusions, which bipolar disorder does not. People with bipolar disorder can have mania or hypomania, which are two distinct types of episodes, but they have the same symptoms. Mania is more severe than hypomania and is more noticeable to other people and causes more noticeable problems in day-to-day -day activities and relationships. Mania may also trigger psychosis, which is a break from reality, which can then require hospitalization. In order to be categorized as having a manic or hypomanic episode, at least three of the following symptoms must be present. Abnormally upbeat, jumpy, or wired. Increased activity, energy, or agitation. Unusual talkativeness exaggerated sense of well-being and self-confidence, decreased need for sleep, racing thoughts, distractibility, or poor and impulsive decision-making. Depression is on the other end of the spectrum. Depressive episodes cause noticeable difficulty in day-to-day -day activities and relationships. In order to be categorized as having a depressive episode, at least five of the following symptoms must be present. Depressed mood, such as feeling sad, empty, hopeless, or tearful, marked loss of interest or feeling no pleasure in all or almost all activities, significant weight loss or weight gain, insomnia or sleeping too much, restlessness or slowed behavior, fatigue or loss of energy, feelings of worthlessness or excessive or inappropriate guilt, decreased ability to think or concentrate or indecisiveness, or thinking about planning or attempting suicide. There are three main types of bipolar disorder. Bipolar disorder one, bipolar disorder two, and psychothymic disorder. You can think of the three types as being on a graph, each having a varying severity of manic and depressive symptoms. In bipolar disorder one, at least one manic episode must be present and may be preceded or followed by hypomanic or major depressive episodes. Manic episodes must last at least seven days or manic symptoms must be so severe that the person needs immediate hospital care. Usually, depressive episodes occur as well and typically last at least two weeks. In bipolar disorder two, at least one major depressive episode and at least one hypomanic episode must be present. In order to be placed into this type, the individual must never have had a manic episode. One thing to note is that bipolar disorder 2 is not a milder form of bipolar disorder 1, but it is in fact a separate diagnosis. While the manic episodes of bipolar disorder 1 can be severe and dangerous, individuals with bipolar disorder 2 can be depressed for longer periods, which can cause significant impairment in their daily lives. In cyclothymic disorder, adults must have at least two years and children and teenagers must have at least one year of many periods of hypomania symptoms and periods of depressive symptoms, though less severe than major depression. There are many potential biological and genetic causes for bipolar disorder. In a few studies conducted where they studied the brains of individuals diagnosed with bipolar disorder, 
they found that people with bipolar disorder appear to have physical changes in their brains. Other studies show that bipolar disorder is more common in people who have a first-degree relative, such as a sibling or a parent, who has the disorder. Thus, because first-degree relatives share similar DNA, there are studies that are trying to find genes that may be involved in causing bipolar disorder. Other than biological and genetic causes, there are also factors that may increase an individual's risk of developing bipolar disorder or can act as a trigger for the first episode. These factors include having a first degree relative with bipolar disorder, periods of high stress such as the death of a loved one or another traumatic event, or drug or alcohol abuse. If you suspect you may meet the criteria for bipolar disorder or may be an individual at risk, then it is important to contact a certified healthcare professional such as your family doctor for a diagnosis. Bipolar disorder is usually diagnosed during late adolescence or early adulthood, but can also appear in other ages. When you meet a physician, they may conduct a physical exam and lab tests to identify medical problems that could be possible causes for your symptoms. Physicians may also refer you to a psychiatrist that will conduct a psychiatric assessment. The psychiatrist may give you a self-reported questionnaire or may guide you through a discussion about your thoughts, feelings, and behaviors. Psychiatrists then may try to see if you meet the criteria for bipolar disorder as depicted in the American Psychiatric Association's Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, also known as DSM-5. The DSM-5 is a list of criteria and symptoms that patients must meet before they are able to be diagnosed with bipolar disorder or any other mental disorder. For people who are diagnosed with bipolar disorder, there are many treatment options available. One option is medication. Physicians may prescribe mood stabilizers to control manic or hypomanic episodes, antipsychotics if symptoms of depression or mania remain despite treatment with other medications, antidepressants to help manage depressive episodes, anti-anxiety medications to help improve anxiety and sleep symptoms, or a combination of the medications listed above. Another popular option is psychotherapy, also known as talk therapy. Psychotherapy involves the patient talking to a mental health professional about their thoughts, feelings, moods, and behaviors. One type of psychotherapy is cognitive behavioral therapy, which involves identifying patients' unhealthy, negative beliefs and behaviors and finding a way to replace them with healthy, positive beliefs and behaviors. We hope that you learned some valuable information today regarding bipolar disorder. Thanks for watching!